hello booktube and welcome back to the library tour of doom where lord ganesha and i are taking you through my library not bookcase by bookcase not shelf by shelf but book by book and not just the books that are on the shelves but also the ebooks and not just those two categories but also as has been requested by a number of you gluttons for punishment every book i've ever owned Several of you emailed and said, Isn't it, don't you keep a record of every book you've had? And, and, and we all know that you can already remember what you thought of it. Why don't you do those too? Why don't you include those in the Library Tour of Doom? Every book that you've ever had, that you've ever read. <laughs> okay, fine. Challenge accepted. Uh, I'm feeling uh, considerably under the weather today, so this will not be a long one. Uh, and that's a shame because I, I'm picking these at random, and the one that I picked for today I could go on about at some length. <laughs> this is Shogun by James Cavell, all the way from 1975, in this gorgeous new cover design. Uh, I originally had, like everybody else, I had the, the white, fat, mass-market paperback of Shogun with the, with the bold red letters. Uh, and I read that, and I read it to pieces, and then I got another paperback, another one of those, and read it to pieces. It was everywhere. I never got the hardcover of that edition, but uh, I think even at one point I had, I think Book of the Month Club did it in two volumes, and I had those at one point or other, and then for a long time I had nothing, I had nothing, I had no copy of Shogun at all, and then I saw somewhere, maybe it was on BookTube, years ago, I saw uh, the, that it had been reissued in this mass market, no, I think it was before BookTube, I think I was working in a bookstore and saw it, and thought, well, I'm, I'm kind of... I'm kind of drifting away from mass market paperbacks, so I don't, you know, as pretty as it is, I don't want it. And then in a used venue, I think it might have been the Brattle Bookshop here in Boston, I saw that there was a trade paperback uh, size of that same edition. So I grabbed it. It is my edition. I have read it once since then, but I am due to reread this book. This this came out in 1975 and sold like griddle cakes. Just, it is the story of... Uh, of Japan in 1600, of Japan in the early 1600s. And we see it, uh, the, the time-honored narrative technique that James Cavell uses to open and close the story and to move us through it is from the eyes of a stranger, a British mariner named John Blackthorne, who is um, the pilot of a vessel called the Erasmus that crashes on the Japanese islands. And he is a stranger. He is first kept in custody, and many of the ways of the world of medieval Japan are totally strange to him and his crew. Uh, the healthier eating, the the healthier hygiene, just in general, the bathing, and also uh, the feudal societal structure that allows a, a feudal lord or that feudal lord's feudal lord to do whatever they want. They have total control. The, the one scene in the early on in the novel that really hammers at home is when one of those local uh, functionaries simply summarily beheads someone because he is the judge, the jury, and the executioner. He is the legal system embodied. Um, but Clavel worked on this thing, researched it for a long time, it took him a long time to write, and he knew when he handed in the manuscript uh, that he had an absolute winner on his hands. He was never the humblest of authors anyway, but he knew that this was a totally overpowering novel. And he was right, much though it may grate <laughs> against me to say so. And much though he may have been wrong about subsequent novels, he, he went back to this well many, many times. Uh, and some of, his, some of his other novels aren't quite as successful. A lot of them are. James Cavell is an author very much worth reading. I don't know that I, that anything in, of his is in print in America just to go and walk into your bookstore and find, except for this. Uh, but this this book became an, a massive hit, and then it was made into a TV miniseries, and that just doubled its popularity. That just People fell in love with the story in the miniseries and went to go and find the book, and were daunted at first by the size of it. You can't really tell from this trade paperback, but this is a this is a very long book. The pay, the mass market paperback really uh, shows it a lot clearer, uh, and people saw that and were momentarily daunted. And all the readers who had gone before them, and also the author, said, "Start reading it. See if it seems like a chore." And it doesn't. It doesn't at all. It is totally, totally propulsive. Just totally immersive. Uh, 
as Blackthorn learns more and more about this society, the good people in it, the bad people in it, the alienist rubs away as we are brought into that society and subsumed in it, so that we are caught up in the dramas and the, the odd nobility of some of these characters. Just absolutely terrific. Uh, so your uh, Library Tour of Doom for today is a massive recommendation. This is a huge book. This trade paperback comes in at uh, almost a thousand pages, 990 something or other. So this would work for March of the Mammoth. If you haven't ever got around to the novel Shogun and maybe you think it belongs to, you know, your parents' generation and isn't all that good, it, you would be mistaken. All you are, uh, uh, ca ca ideas like that are almost always mistaken. <laughs> almost always. Your parents thought it about Forever Amber and they were wrong. <laughs> Their parents thought it about the, uh, the Cloister and the Hearth, and they were wrong. Those books still live. They still work. The generation that thought it about Cloister and the Hearth was certain that Lorna Doone was their parents' historical novel and very boring, and it isn't. None of them are. They all still completely carry their weight. <laughs> so uh, if you're looking for an absolutely immersive, fantastic historical novel, then that's your library tour of Doom for today. Nobody said that the books themselves had to be torture. Just the process. <laughs> the process may be torture, but as Lord Ganesha can contest, it will also purify you. <laughs> so I'm going to wrap this up for now. I'm not going to make any other videos today, and I'm just going to uh, cross my fingers and hope that we can meet again tomorrow. So I'm going to I'm going to shoot for that. Uh, so I will I will see you soon. Thank you, Booktube.